What does Ori do? Oh, I don't answer that question. I can't tell you. I'm working very hard. So you're like a, like a proper 9 to 5 boy? No, I meant I'm working like on myself. Like I'm going to the gym, I go to anti-gravity, I go to the CCI gym, I'm doing a lot of self-reflection. I have graduated from the school of life. My experiences have been my education and I'm a boy who has lived. So I've done it all. I've been here before and I've done it and I've learned it. First of all, as I started reading and looking up more information about him, I couldn't help but draw comparisons to a Netflix K-drama called Celebrity and Gossip Girls because both of these deal with a lot of what goes on in upper class social elite circles and what happens when a seeming outsider comes in to disturb the peace. For example, Gossip Girls revolves around privileged teens from the Upper East Side of New York and the core group of lead characters are all children of incredibly wealthy parents. And the core characters often interact with other characters in their social group who are also from other wealthy families, but not exactly the same league of wealth, so to speak. And I couldn't help drawing comparisons between these and other characters and Ori, who's been around star kids and celebrities for a long time, even if he's just come into this like public limelight more recently. With that being said, let's go into a bit of who exactly he is. Orhana Watramani or Ori, as he's more popularly known, is a son of Surat and Shinaz Avatramani. According to Surge's LinkedIn profile, he's director of Mardi Gras Liquor. And in addition to that business, there's several reports that tell us that the family also works in real estate and the hospitality industries. So they allegedly own a lot of different hotels and hotel chains. So this alone tells us that he comes from a really wealthy Mumbai-based family and is no stranger to these upper-class social circles. Before he became this social media star that he is today. We have found several pictures of Ori showing him chilling with several of these Bollywood star kids and furthermore we also found that there's a lot of these links to like the Ambani's and it turns out we found a report a business standard that says that he's close friends with Radhika Merchant who is engaged to Anand Ambani son of Mukesh Anita. But when it comes to his education though this was pretty interesting because many reports first claim that he went to Columbia in New York City but according to his LinkedIn where he holds a bachelor's in fine arts and communications design from Parshan School of Design in New York City and is listed as the special project manager at Reliance Industries, although we couldn't exactly get the details uh, of that more. We also looked into where he went to school, and while we couldn't get the exact details of that either, he's gone on to quote in many interviews that he went to a boarding school in Kodekanal in Tamil Nadu, and actually a Facebook post that we found from Humans of Bombay in July 2015, there's a picture of a much younger looking Ori where he's talking about his life at the boarding school and how he was ended up witnessing a lot of issues and how it was different difficult for him to adjust there given his sheltered upbringing. With that, all I can really say is that it's very evident that he was born into wealth and class privilege and was around a lot of these star kids and celebrities and it's not something new to him. Right now in the relevance room, we are planning in the my what, downfall. Sorry? In the relevance room, in what the relevance office, room? we have a room called the relevance room where all my minions hey. And they have to dress up. I mean, we know that it is a thing that happens organically because people do burn out when they're on social media and they're like putting out content 24 seven. But to actually be like, oh, yeah, this is a thing that happens where there's a downfall and then you do a comeback. So I don't know. Do we call that genius or do we call that like recognizing a pattern and reproducing it? Like, I don't know. And just the, the concept of this relevance room that he talks about is just like, I yeah, we have seen like this pattern, I think, from the start of like. Uh, major social media outlets where um, I'm thinking of this one, um, she was one of the first makeup artists on like the YouTube scene. I think her name was Michelle Pham. And this was like early 2000s when they started doing like initial like YouTube videos and they started blowing up. Right? We had like, she was one of the first people to go on like YouTube and be like, okay, like doing tutorials and everything. And she, she was one of the first ones to really get a lot of like, well, now we call it an influencer, but back then we didn't really have that term. And I remember like there was like for years, like she got a lot of brand deals and contracts and then suddenly she just disappeared. And like years later, she came back on YouTube and she was talking about how it like, you know, she burned out and like she was not feeling like 
she was doing what she was enjoyable, like it became a really difficult thing to sustain. And I think even Lily Singh, when she kind of made, there was a lot of points in her like social media journey where she, I, I wrote a piece actually once about how she came out and said like, I'm taking a break. No, it's not good to be online all the time. And it's not good for your like emotional well-being uh, uh, as well. And she kind of was like, yeah, you need to take a break. So whether it's like one of these things where they just kind of like go off the charts, you know, because it's just gotten too much to handle and then choose to come back into the limelight or whether like there's been some kind of like, oh, cancel culture, you know, gets to them because of something they said. There's there's definitely like this trend that where you know that, oh, yeah, at a certain point, like there is going to be like a dip in their content or what they're doing. But the point that he's making here to actually plan that and like be like, oh, yeah, we're going to devise my fall or like the death or worry and then come back. I don't know what to call that. Like, it, it's like some next level like PR strategy. Yeah. Ian think is me and talk like me. Sorry, did you? Oh my god. Yes. I'm sorry. Did you call them minions? Yes, the minions. Uh, yes. Which oh. are your the members of your crew? Oi number two, oi number three, oi number four. four. They're all the oi. Like. My name is Chanel Oberlin, and I am the queen of Kappa Kappa Tau. No. These are my minions. I don't know their names. I don't want to know their names. They are known as Chanel number two. Chanel number three. Chanel number five. Chanel number one, obvi. There was a Chanel number four, but she got meningitis. She was like, I'm sick. I have to go home. And I was like, no, stay. But she went home anyway, and then she died. So another thing I was right about. Thank you. So in the relevance room, where all my minions come up. There are many more that look like you. So you made a statement right now saying Ori's here, he's there, he's everywhere. He do is an Ori lookalike who will be at the event and you'll think it's me for the first 20 minutes until I actually get from Nairman Point to BKC. And then from BKC to Bandra, and then from Bandra to some movie premiere. And that's and we all wear the same outfit. We have the same look. One is a good one is a friend actually. Like he's an actual friend. Right. He just will fill in when he has to. Oh wow. I'll send you a picture, you won't tell you won't tell us about Listen. talking shit about me. I won. Ah. And I've taken your shade and turned it into a parade. So we're all laughing at me, but I made money off it. I won. You're making memes, but I'm making money. They're making yeah. memes. I'm, I'm making, making money. money. I like see that's the attitude that I think that is. When someone makes a real parody of me, I screen it at home. Screen and I us, my friends, and we we'll all watch the reel together like a little movie. And then I'll send a thank you letter to the memers, and I'll send them gifts. Send, send us gifts. gifts. We'll do it again. It's we'll do it again. There we go. Now, what's fascinating here is not that Ori has these vague narcissistic answers. It's also that he definitely seems to know what he's doing. He has this sort of confident way in which he exudes this air that he feels like his strategy to fame and success is going to work. The funny thing is that this marketing technique would only work for those close to glitz, glam, popularity, aka if you're born with a silver spoon. But Let's take this as a business case study and let's see what's really going on with Ori and this whole scenario of where he's blowing up all over the internet. Now let's create our own Ori doppelganger here. And for the sake of explaining his success, meet Snorri, an average person who is the son of a supermarket manager, say in the same city of Mumbai. He clicks pictures with the celebrities and business nights that happen to be spotted at his supermarket, but in a very different capacity. Now, Ori has a sort of insider air with his gecko on the wall pose, while Snorri would probably be clicking a selfie, relating more to the masses who meet their celebrities, thereby creating a very average buzz. The trick to branding your personality isn't merely driving a bunch of likes for what you do, but driving them to invest in you as a brand. Now, the only way the Snorri character would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ori is if he adapted an Anna Delvey storyline. Now, if you remember Anna Delvey, this is Anna Delvey. She faked her entire Silver Spoon story in order to get the fame and success and the contacts and the money that she needed, and she eventually got caught. Taylor Anna Sorkin, but who pulled off ambitious scams on New York's elite. And I had seen Anna in photos on Instagram and saw that she had over 40,000 Instagram followers. She had a lot of artsy photos of travel and art and shopping pictures with people in the fashion world. But she was smart. 
She knew how to work the world and she knew that having a silver spoon got you certain advantages in that world. In fact, when we first started researching this video about Ori, we found a lot of posts where people were speculating if Ori was pulling an Anna Delvey and lying about so many things in his past because almost everything he talked about never really added up. But we quickly had to discard that and stop going down that rabbit hole because we had substantial evidence to prove that he does indeed come from wealth. But Ori isn't the first socialite to come up in the way that he has. You've all probably met his predecessor, Kim Kardashian. Now for the sake of comparison, I initially considered comparing Paris Hilton. But no, Paris was the main character and Kim started out as her childhood friend, her stylist and assistant but also she came from a reputed wealthy family. Mr. Kardashian, you sat in that courtroom as a lawyer. Now you're talking about things that you discussed with O.J. Simpson. So we could take out this duo and switch their faces with Janvi Kapoor and Orhan, AKA Ori. Now, Kim was very much on the outskirts of popularity for a long time as Paris's friend. Does everyone get a tape of this? Because I hope you do so you can see me when I'm famous and old and remember me of this beautiful little girl. It was the infamous Ray J incident that threw her into the limelight. Now, I know that a lot of us think that the scandal is what made her famous and leading her to create multi-million dollar companies and her family show. Would you be where you are? had there not been a <sighs> You know, I think that's how I was definitely introduced to the world. So I'd like to think that I'm, you know, aware. I'm not naive to that fact that that's pretty much how I was introduced to the world. It was a negative way. So I felt like I really had to work 10 times harder to get people to see the real me. Mm -hmm. But the truth, as always, is a little bit more complex than that. Yes, people can get their minute of fame through controversy, hedonism, stupidity, or scandal. But not everyone acquires lasting fame and success quite like Kim Kardashian has, spanning over 15 years. And it looks like Ori is heading in that direction if he is lucky. Side note, speaking of Ori and the Kardashians, this is Ori and Kim's sister, Kylie. Okay. The halo around the around. Didn't Kylie wish you happy birthday? Yes, yeah, she, she did. did. Throw oh, back. Girl, show it to me. Hey, Johnny, it's Kylie. We love you. We love you. Okay, back to the marketing of fame featuring the Kardashians. Elizabeth Paquette published an honors thesis with Assumption University titled How Kim Kardashian Has Sustained Her Fame and What Companies Can Learn From Her. Kim is just one example of a celebrity who is famous for being famous. In a sense, her fame works in a loop. She is famous because she has talked about a lot, which is because she is famous, and so on. When she originally rose to the top of tabloid headlines, she had no talent other than creating stories for the media to buzz about and photo ops for them to supplement their celebrity gossip articles. Barbara Walters even said to her during an interview, all often described as famous for being famous. You don't really act, no. you don't sing, you don't dance, you don't have any, forgive talent. me, any talent. But we're still entertaining people. And it looks like Ori and his PR and marketing team, uh, sorry, his minions, have just started the loop of garnering interest. Just watch how he deals with this interview. Also have like red flags. Maybe who doesn't love drama? The more the flags, the more attractive the person. Bring me the flag. Do say. Bring me the red flags. What do you value most in a friendship? Friendship is a complicated thing. It's not a simple thing. It's not a, you like my picture, I like your picture. It's beyond that. It's, you have to look good in my picture. Rocky Sawant and I also have a really close bond. The because first we're every time I actually got that was another John Kapoor story. So back in the day when I used to bus tables at a group, our little waiters group. Hold up, hold up. I knew you were going to ask that. We'll get back to it. Every response he gives can easily be made into a headline. Instead, we all remember that this was how majority of us were introduced to Ori via Instagram reels. In a world where press and online articles move around the narrative of SEO keywords. SEO stands for search engine optimization and it's basically just the practice of increasing the amount 
of traffic to your website. And Google search traffic is the best kind of traffic. For it is consumer search term driven rather than actual news driven. Ori knows that he needs to get people to be curious about him. Why? Because they need to enter his name into the search engine, thereby creating his name as one of those prominent coveted SEO key terms. Hollywood people are not the easiest to be friend because they don't care to meet random people. But they are all very friendly people. They do give you like a good 30 seconds of attention. And in that 30 seconds, if you manage to make an elevator pitch, you can get a picture with them. And that's about it. You have a 30 second oh, window. Yes. And a 30 second you start making someone you don't know it. Of course, with a Hollywood celebrity, see in Bombay, we all know each other more or less, or eventually we'll or may know who's who because it's a small city. But of course, when you meet a Hollywood, when you meet anyone you don't know that you want to get along with, the agenda's on you, not on them. Because when you're meeting Anne Hathaway, she doesn't care to meet you. She's being polite and she's being nice, but she doesn't care to meet you. But that's not just Anne Hathaway. It could be anyone who may not know you. In the social climbing world of things, you want to meet her, right? You want to be her friend. So what is your elevator pitch to make sure you strike a chord with her that she'll remember you and I guarantee you she'll remember me as that sweet little Indian boy that she met in Rome who was shivering. In Kim's case, we know why people started typing her name into the internet. And with Ori, we found a source as well. He is spotted only with famous people. Known to be BFFs with Nisa Devgan, Janvi Kapoor, Sara Ali Khan, he is popularly known as Ori. However, everyone has the same question, who is he? Well, he calls himself a marketing genius. Who is he? What does he do for a living? Why is he so famous? Why is he with so many famous people? Now, entering your name into the world of SEO ranks in and of itself is a loop. You create curiosity and people to benefit for their own content rankings, like, like us, will always use your name to evoke the SEO gods at the hands of viewers and readers fervently typing your name or clicking on your name looking for answers. Now, how does this type of fame last? In Kim's case, her scandal broke February of 2007, and her dad's reputation and her friendship led to curiosity from big names like Oprah and Barbara Walters wanting to interview her. In October the same year, she and her family got the deal for keeping up with the Kardashians. Ori has gotten his famed interview on Coffee with Karan under his belt. So, will there be a reality show now? I can only imagine how exhausting such a life must be, having to chase the ups and downs of headline grabbing drama, but not everyone is made for that life. But there is no doubt that a silver spoon coupled with a personal drive to make it big is what parallels in the famous for being famous trend in the era of the internet. And thankfully, time will tell if Ori can manage the success story of a Kim Kardashian. Hey, who knows? Just like Kim, he might end up being passionate about law reform or something and use all this fame for the greater good at some point. In the meantime, I think as viewers, all we can do is watch how the cookie crumbles. It's a strange world.